everyone. Welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you today, and we're going to continue our study in Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to pick up in verse 8, and this really um, follows on what we were talking about yesterday about living a holy life and living as um, children of God and, and heirs of what God has blessed us with and being an example or, or living by his example as we follow Christ. And so, um, in verse 8, he picks up this same idea, and, and he says that if you, if you were once darkness, for no, he says, for you once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. I think that's a very interesting sentence right there. For you once were darkness. He doesn't say for you once were in darkness, or you once lived in darkness. No, no. He says you once were darkness darkness. You see, we bring an energy into this world. We bring something into this world around us uh, everywhere that we are. And when we are apart from Christ and, and in our sin, um, lost in our sin, we are bringing darkness into the world. And, and that darkness has no hope. It has no power. It has no, it has no strength. And so when, but when we are in Christ, then all of that changes. All of that is transformed. And he says, but now you are light in the Lord. It's the in the Lord part that matters there. It's the in Christ that he was talking about back in Ephesians chapter 1, right? We covered that extensively. But um, it's that understanding that we are in Christ. And because of that, we bring light. We are light. We're not just bringing light. We're not just living in light. We are the light. We are the energy of Christ that is brought into the world. So he says this, live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light consists of goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. And so he says, this light that you're bringing into the world, this light that you are, that is coming to you and through you, um, that is your essence now, he, he identifies it here. He says, so for the fruit of this light is, it consists of goodness, righteousness, and truth. It, it, it reminds me of Ephesians, or I'm sorry, uh, Galatians 5, 22, where he talks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control, those, um, those things, because they are what is produced. They are the light that is produced in us or through us that we are. Those are the things that we are to be. And so, um, that's what he's pointing out here, but he, he only uses three of them here, uh, goodness, righteousness, and truth. And so when we live in, when we live as light, we live as goodness in the world. We live as righteousness in the world. We live as truth in the world. What does that mean? It means that we contrast those things in the world that are not those things, right? So when we are living as righteousness or, or goodness, um, then we are contrasting evil. We are contrasting badness that, that is happening in the world around us. How do we do that? We live that, we do that by bringing action to those things, by, be, by bringing goodness into a bad situation, by uh, stepping in with where he says the truth here. What, what what happens with the truth is the contrast of the truth is the lie. So whatever the enemy is saying that is a lie, we bring God's word, the truth, into that same circumstance. And it is through the truth that sets us free, right? The truth releases us from that lie and takes away the power of that lie. And so he says, and find out what pleases the Lord. Find out what we need to do that pleases the Lord. How do we produce the light in the world that pleases the Lord? It's simply by doing what his word tells us to do. <clears throat> Have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. He says, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. In other words, get away from the darkness. Too many, too many of us, too many believers try to kind of 
stand right on the line. We try to get real close to the edge and, and stand right up against the edge just to see. That's called loophole Christianity. And it's like, how close can I get without actually breaking the law? No, listen, it's not about keeping the law. It's about worshiping the Lord. It's about saying, I don't want anywhere, I don't want to get anywhere close to that line because I want to worship the Lord. I want to declare the worship of God in my life by not even thinking, not even wanting to go there. I want to stay in the center of your will. I want to stay in the in the center of of the life that you have called me to. And it's there that I get to bring honor and glory to uh to the Lord. And so he says, what, what should we do then? We expose them. We expose that darkness. We, we shine light on it is really what we do. In verse 12, he says, it is shameful even to mention what is disobedient, uh, what the disobedient do in secret. It's shameful to even, to even mention what the disobedient do. What is that? It means that we have to take sin seriously. We have to take Seriously, those things that God have told us not to do and stop trying to skirt uh, the, the line or stop trying to press the issue and say, okay, well, how much can I get away with or, or whatever? No, no. He says here, don't even mention those things. Don't even have the thoughts in your head. Verse 13, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Now, this is a, <clears throat> this last little section here where he says this, uh, this is why it is said. He's kind of quoting from uh, the, the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 60, Isaiah writes this, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord's rise, uh, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. You see, he he doesn't name Christ in Isaiah back in the Old Testament, but that's what he's prophesying. That's who he's prophesying for. He says the Lord, and and um, here the Apostle Paul calls him the Christ, the Messiah, the one who has come. Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. You see, when we wake up and we stop trying to live in the darkness, we stop trying to hang out or hide out in the darkness of this world, but rather we wake up and come into the light and we live and walk in the light as he is in the light, as 1 John tells us. Now we walk fully awake. We look, walk fully aware of what is going on in our lives and around us. And it's through that that we get to experience the fullness of the flow of the power that Christ wants to pour into you. So. I want to pray for us and 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 just ask, Father, we just thank you that we get to walk in the light, that we are children of the light, that we are no longer darkness, that we get to bring light into a dark world and illuminate the world around us with your love and your righteousness, your goodness and your truth. And, and we just pray, God, that you would give us strength and power and boldness to to do that and to live a life that is worthy of the calling you've given us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks everyone for being with me. See you soon.